So can I start off? Yes, sir, you can. All right, assalamu alaikum. So um, essentially, uh, depression is a, is a topical issue in our present day uh, world, of which it has occupied a um, limelight in terms of importance because of the several things that can occur when persons are depressed. Okay, so it's important that we all appreciate what constitutes depression and understand fully what depression is and what it is not. Because um, a lack of understanding can make one to take uh, the, right, the wrong decision in seeking help for depression. So let's jump into it. I have an outline here, which uh, I'll be following. That's the next slide. Uh, we'll just go through a brief introduction, uh, do a background on what uh, depression. <clears throat> we look at an overview of symptoms of depression. If you notice, uh, in my topic, I swapped your signs and symptoms. People you generally like to say signs and symptoms. It's nice when you are, when you are making statements, but typically the symptoms come first. You know, because the symptoms is what the person is experiencing. Then the signs is what the clinician will look out for. So I try to put it in the right chronological order. Instead of saying signs and symptoms, I decide to say symptoms and signs. Okay? So I uh, will look at the overview of depression, what depression, the cause symptoms of depression, how, next slide, I'm on the next slide, why, um, how depression can manifest, uh, the various grades in which depression can, uh, can manifest, it can be mild, moderate, or severe. Yeah. Then who can be affected? That's more or less like the epidemiology of depression. Then we now like, um, you know, talk about depression properly. Now, if you notice, I decided to bring in anxiety there. Typically in psychiatric uh, practice and mental health, we understand that depression most of the time does not occur alone. You know, if we, if we consider depression and anxiety as two pills in a pod. You know, uh, where, where you have, you know, the external pod, for example, Usually, there are usually, typically there are about two of them. There are a few that might be more than that, but typically there are two things in the pod. And it's good to look at it that if you have one of them being depression, the other one will be anxiety. Also, if you have anxiety, you're likely to find depressive symptoms there. So, so that's why most of the time when we discuss depression, we don't want to discuss it in isolation because anxiety too is all, almost always there. Even though I didn't dive too much on anxiety, but it's good to know that those uh, concepts uh, uh, exist. They will now look at managing uh, depression. They will look at uh, some Islamic uh, prescriptions for managing uh, depression. Then, of course, we conclude. Uh, next slide. So, by way of introduction, um, religious belief is an important uh, determinant of uh, mental health. I'm on the next slide. Uh, depression is the mental health uh, responsible for the largest disease uh, burden globally. Okay? You see, um, it used to be considered that uh, cardiovascular problems are, are, are responsible uh, for the largest volume of disease, but in recent times, depression is more or less has come to line and uh, people have come to realize, to realize how important it is and uh, the, the, the extent that it is actually affecting persons. Okay? Uh, it's important to note, like the uh, previous com uh, uh, person commented, that look, being depressed does not just have to do with you not having facing uh, difficult life issues, not having money, not having proper or things like that. No, it's actually a clinical syndrome that can affect you, whatever your socioeconomic status. So depression is not a respecter of socioeconomic status. You can have all the good things of life, and yet depression can come on on, the, on an individual. All right, so that's why it's important to understand what. It, really entails, okay? I've mentioned that Islam is the fastest uh, growing world religion. That one is without any doubt. Uh, but however, some Muslims believe that depression occurs due to a lack of faith. We need to uh, clarify that that's not it. Individuals or families with, uh, depression, with this opinion are less likely to have symptoms of sick professional psychological health due to the stigma. So when persons, because of uh, their religious beliefs, erroneously think that when persons are are depressed, then because their iman is not strong enough or something like that. At the end of the day, the, 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 the person will suffer depression for long periods without respite because they will end up 
continuing doing the taking the right, uh, wrong intervention. All right. So um, next slide. So depression can happen to any one of us. All right. So being Muslims uh, means having our faith rooted within us, but it doesn't mean that we are not vulnerable to experiencing such challenges. So I'm just still processing the point I made earlier. Having depression does not negate one uh, believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, divine decree, but can distort the iman. So we, that, that, this first point is actually very important. You find that when people, especially when they are severely depressed, they start questioning their iman. They start wondering that, has Allah forgotten me? Uh, I mean, if, if God exists, why am I experiencing what am I, I'm experiencing right now? Things like that. So the pressure can actually push one into a belief system, I mean, distort or affect you to, with one experience, expressing it to seek help as far as possible. All right? So it's also important to recognize that depression and anxiety as mental illnesses, are uh, mental illnesses and uh, needs to be treated professionally, okay? Islamic belief can help make recovery faster and even prevent frequent relapses. So actually your iman can be a, a reason why you'll be able to weather through uh, the, 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 the uh, experience of depression whenever it's, uh, if one is afflicted with it, all right? So, so prayer, uh, prayers are very much um, part of of Muslims, okay, uh, I'm on the next slide now. Important, it's important to couple each with the right measures and uh, taking the appropriate steps to manage mental health issues such as seeking professional help. So while you pray, also seek professional help uh, to help you manage uh, the challenges you might be coming down with, okay? So someone who experiences mental health challenges needs to seek proper medical intervention and support. So while you are praying, look for the people who, who know um, about what you are experiencing. Let them help you out. Prayer alone, would, they will not always solve uh, uh, these problems. Like I typically tell persons when I'm doing my counseling sessions and things like that, that look, if, uh, if you think your faith is so strong, if you are hungry, why don't you just pray about your hunger and let your hunger disappear? Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. Allah has made it out, okay, fine, this is a problem. If we, for the problem of our hunger, eat food, and that solves it. So if you say you are so faithful and uh, you just feel by it, you probably just end up hungry, you know? So similarly, if you have uh, an ill health or a health challenge, and there are people with knowledge, in, appropriate knowledge in that area, seek them while praying that whatever solution that they bring forth will work for you. Because for kind of loud, uh, many persons, you may find two individuals having the same diagnosis of depression. You give the same treatment, one will respond, another will not respond. You know, so those are quite, I mean, are things we know happen. Of course, you may have to explore other areas before you may be able to get some, um, some good response on the other person in which initial treatment was failing. All right. So next uh, slide. So it's important to first understand the, what defines depression and anxiety before attempting to discuss their management. So the reason that last uh, statement, next slide, I'm on the next slide. I uh, you've not moved it, okay? So this idea about understanding what depression is, is important. And the, 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 the whole idea is grounded in one of the habits we we'll see, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, um, uh, know me before you worship me, or if you do not know me, how would you uh, know how to worship me? So it's important to know what they're dealing with so that you can know the appropriate uh, actions to take, you know? So now, what is depression? Next slide. So depression, as you know, is a, a, um, a mood disorder, okay? And a, it's a clinical condition which is characterized by low mood, feelings of sadness and low energy. There are three points there. First, or the first thing that is left on the side is a mood disorder. Mood means how subjectively or how individuals experience themselves. Sometimes you ask people that, how do you feel in your spirit? You know? So if you want to uh, water it down, just say that, uh, do you feel happy or do you feel sad? You know? So mood state is what defines whether one is feeling happy, one feeling 
normal or one is feeling sad and the various shapes in between. Okay, so uh, typically people who have what is their normal mood and you know, you know what your normal mood is. You know, you may not necessarily need to be laughing and uh, being elected to be in a good mood. You can be in a good mood and just uh, still um, uh, have a calm face. Then again, when there is a significant change in this, that is when you may say someone is having an mood disorder. So when there's a dip, when the person is uh, sad, unhappy, that is when depression sets in. And this is not just the depression that happens or the um, state of unhappiness when you are bereaved, when you've lost property, or when there is a, um, like a mishap or something. No, it is, uh, depression is much, much more than that, much, much deeper than that. So uh, depression is deeper than normal expressions of unhappiness, sadness that comes with loss of valuable person or relationship or possessions. So when people uh, have a problem in their relationship, they may become sad. You know, if you lose your car, lose your house or something, or you've got the risk, it can be sad. But that doesn't still qualify as depression because it's just a normal human experience when things like this occur, all right? So usually, depression lasts longer than expected for whatever situation precipitates it. So some of these lost events, like uh, being bereaved, you know, losing uh, an important uh, uh, um, property on all of that, can actually you push the person into depression. Like individuals that lost a lot of money during that MMM scam, you know, the, the, things like that. A lot of people became depressed out of that. So it's understandable. So, but then it's the duration of being in that mood state that makes it depression. So a lost event can tip somebody into a depression. Then again, depression can occur out of the blue. You do not necessarily need to have suffered a lost event for you to be depressed. So you, everything might be so nice and rosy, you know, things are working well for you. Then just within the space of a few days to a few weeks, you can just find it deep in your mood. You can absolutely not explain why it's happening. Yes, depression can come up on an individual like that, especially if there's a family history. And that points to the fact that there might be genetic factor to that. So depression, again, is not a failure or weakness of character. No, no it's not something you can wish off and say, yes, I will it off. You know, and uh, no, I don't need to be depressed. Let, let me, you know, bring up my guns too and, uh, and, and, and be firm and be strong. No way. If proper depression comes upon you, you have absolutely no power over it. Okay? So, the three core symptoms which I've mentioned well, earlier. I have the depression. Like the next slide. So, uh, essentially, involves uh, the host mood, everybody. Low energy and uh, loss of interest in previously pleasurable activities. Okay, <clears throat> so those are the things that constitute depression. Those three core symptoms, all right? Low mood, low energy, and loss of interest in previously pleasurable activities, all right? So let's continue. So other symptoms you can find in depression include a reduced level of social interaction, all right? Um, did you jump the slide? Okay, good. Reduced level of social interaction, poor work or academic um, output, poor self-care, um, poor self-work, you know, feelings of guilt, and uh, poor outlook on the future. Uh, people with, I think you may have jumped a slide. What I'm seeing here is different from what there is on the slide. Are, are we together? Yes, we are together, Sam. Are we going so to I think symptoms. Yes, oh, that's uh -huh. okay. Yes. yes, this is what you jumped. Yes, okay, okay good. Uh -huh. So, you see, I mentioned this figure three core symptoms no mood, no energy, and lots of interest in pleasurable activities. These are these three, those three symptoms, you can't miss them. Those are the defining symptoms in depression. So, the next ones are other symptoms that come that you can find. And these other symptoms I'm going to mention now, which are on the slide as you can see can be explained if you uh, factorize, let me put it, use that mathematical term, you know, or simplify, rather, if you simplify those other three core symptoms, you can explain what you all these other ones that we mentioned and how they come about. So you can have no appetite or increased appetite, as the case may be. So typically what you find common is that when people are depressed, their appetite is very, very poor. They don't want to eat, you know, they may go for several days without eating, depending on how uh, severe that depression is. 
And um, again, the depression is number one, apart from loss of appetite, they don't even have the strength to eat the food. They may be very hungry, you know, the food is there right there in front of them. They will lose interest in that food and they don't even have the energy to feed themselves. So my friend and I have gone through severely depressed who has to be fed, food fed like a baby, because they just don't have that energy or the interest to carry that food and eat, you know. So low libido. Yes, that's uh, uh, the um, for, for married couples now, you know. There will be lot of interest in in, 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 in in sex. You might find out that uh, uh, the partner, if they do not understand, they may think the, 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 their partner or their spouse have lost interest in them, or they, they are becoming, I mean, having maybe some other uh, interactions outside outside the home. No, the person can make the spouse to completely lose interest in in uh, in any intimacy. You know, so. It may be a reason to actually like seek help before it becomes complicated. So sleep. So the sleep might be poor. It may either be increased or maybe uh, the, 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 maybe um, reduced. Typically, it's reduced. People tend to wake up three to four hours or two to three to four hours earlier than their usual waking up time. Okay. But in some cases, especially in mild depression, they may actually oversleep. Now, but the thing about the sleep in depression is that when in the business, when the person wakes up. They feel unrefreshed. You know, the, typically when you wake up in the morning, you feel energized, you feel refreshed, you feel less, you can change the day. But in depression, when the person wakes up, the person is completely unrefreshed. It's actually they didn't sleep at all. So that's the thing, the quality of sleep in depression. Likewise, you can have weight loss or weight gain. In my depression, some people may, when they are depressed, they tend to eat a lot of carbohydrate based food. You know, you see them, they will cook a lot of food, you know and um, do a lot of big, I mean, pastries and things like that. So they tend to eat a lot in the mild form of depression. But the moderate and more severe one is usually loss of appetite. So it's not, it's not impossible to find both uh, appetite, I mean, loss of weight and increase in weight in depression. Okay, but typically, it's loss of weight that usually happens because the person will lose interest in eating food. Okay, depression also leads to a reduced level of immunity. All right, so when you are depressed, a lot of your, uh, the, the cells in the body that have to fight infection and all that would, um, would, would, would lose their, 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 their potency. So one is more liable to come down with infections when one is depressed, okay? So other symptoms are just related to these ones. Uh, reduced level of social interaction, poor work or academic output, poor self-care, poor self-worth. Feelings of guilt and poor outlook on the future. You see, if you look at this, poor self worth the person feels unworthy. And part of feeling unworthy is that they feel like maybe there's they, they, no, they, they, no point for them to be alive because what is the use anyway, all right? Then they start having these feelings of guilt. This guilt might be directed at things that have happened in their past. Things, maybe some erroneous or flimsy things they've done in the past they start feeling genuinely remorseful and guilty over it all over again. Or sometimes they may attribute the, 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 uh, the misfortune of others to be as, uh, as they, that they are, the, as they, they are the one who, are, who is responsible for such misfortune. And it's important to be very careful about it because if you see typically what happens uh, when they say, when they, I mean, when they especially in last in the villages, they say somebody's being lynched. Why is this person being linked? You know, they will say that, uh, yes, he has confessed the, the let me use the robot now, that, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, that he has confessed to killing so so, to killing that and being responsible for so so and so death and things like that. No, this woman, you know, a typical old woman who makes such confessions will probably think that you see the person is there living alone, is elderly, living alone in a hut. Uh, the children uh, the children are probably either uh, not around or some of them are even there. That's because God has even blessed her with long life, you know. So when and the person is typical among women, especially in the extreme of age, when they start getting to that mindset, they may start attributing or feeling guilty things that happen to other people around them and feel the need to make such confessions. So one is to be very careful when people are uh, trying to, you know, give people names in the village that this one is a witch or whatever. If you know, the person has his depression, the depression is the person come back to life, right? So poor outlook, um, 
on the future, and that is a bit people are having this idea that world, uh, life is not worth living, and that's what may usually make them to start considering suicide. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, slide. So other symptoms be characterized by negative thoughts, things like I am worthless, I am a failure, uh, I can't achieve anything in life. You know, I am responsible for others in luck. Others will be better off if I'm gone. You know, if you just cascade this. Uh, mindset, the next thing that person will look, maybe it's better, I just die. Once I die, every other person will be better. I mean, people will be better for it. And again, in this mindset, especially for women that have little children, you might realize that uh, incidences you women have had in the, in the press where people, you see a woman kills her children and kills herself. Or a man kills his family and kills himself. There is a reason why people do that. Because they look at it, primarily they want to commit suicide. But they end up committing suicide before committing the suicide. They feel that they are, they, 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 there is need for them to die. But they now think about that if they die, who is going to take care of these little kids? That means these kids are going to suffer. So it's a messy killing, unfortunately, that they are trying to, to, to exact. They now kill off the children that, yes, these ones are dead, and so they, they will not have to suffer anything before they kill themselves. So the person can take the life of not just the sufferer, but even dependent on the sufferer. So it's very, very important to, uh, to, be, to take care of that, I mean, to be aware of that, all right? So, next slide, how can uh, depression manifest? So in the mild cases, here you, you, the, you, you, the individual may have two of the core symptoms and any other two of the other symptoms. So those core symptoms are the ones I mentioned earlier, the, uh, out of those three. You know, no mood, no energy, and loss of interest in pleasurable activities. Those are the cause symptoms. So, in my depression, typically they will have either any of those two first two, uh, any of those any two of the first three cause symptoms. Then any other one of the ones I mentioned, oh, palsy, feelings of guilt, you know, feelings of sadness, crying first. I didn't put that on there. Yes, the people who are depressed, you find them crying a lot. You know. So the individual is still in my depression, the individual will still be able to get by with daily activities, but with a lot of difficulty. So you find out that they are able to still go to work, money, but then they may be clumsy, they may not meet targets uh, on time. And you know, so usually and sometimes you may just go unnoticed. For many people go to my depression and people will not be because they are able to just cope by forcing themselves. And funny also, uh, my depression may not necessarily require uh, drug treatment, sometimes psychotherapy and counseling is just the what the person is and a listening ear and uh, an emotional support and they'll be able to go through it. But in the mild and the moderate and severe ones usually they require treatment. Okay. So they may also progress to more severe from if untreated. So if it's not managed when it's mild, the difficult is that it will progress to moderate and severe. So now moderate depression. Uh next slide. Uh, so in moderate depression uh, two of the core symptoms plus at least three of the others. You know, in mind, you say the person will have two of the core symptoms and any other two. In non the person will have a, about two of still two of the core symptoms and any other three, you know, of the other uh, 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 other symptoms to make a diagnosis of moderate depression. You know, many anxiety anxiety symptoms and physical symptoms are also present. So in modern depression, you find out that a lot of anxiety symptoms are there. That's why you can never separate depression from anxiety. Then activity of daily living uh, or work is usually significantly impaired. So somebody who is moderately uh, depressed may not be able to cope adequately at work, even if, if they show up. All right? So uh, the next slide, the severe depression. Uh, <clears throat> All the three uh, core symptoms are present. Then you now have at least four or more of the other symptoms. All right. So all the core symptoms of low mood, low energy, and loss of interest in previously pleasurable activities. Those three core symptoms are there. Then you now have four of the other ones. Again, any four at all, as the case may be. I and mean, visually, it's even more than that. Okay. So function. Um, uh, Functioning is severely impaired. Uh, in severe depression, people usually cannot just function. They will not be going to work. They may skip, skip work for several days or weeks of work. They just can't go. The energy is not there. The interest is not there. Okay? So people with mental are completely unable to function. Suicidal and homicidal tendencies, which I described earlier, are usually, can usually be present in the severe depression. Okay? There's a complete lack 
of uh, of feeding and in attention to self care. Yeah. All right, so people who are severely depressed have no business taking care of themselves. They will not take their bath for days or weeks. Or if you tell them it's with a lot of difficulty, or sometimes they may even have to be battered like a child. Okay, they will leave their hair disheveled, you know, don't change clothes, things like that. So, and uh, then of course, in severe depression, they may start making plans to commit suicide because they find themselves in a very dark place. You know, I that is the patient I saw the, earlier in the week who gave me uh, a lady, a young lady, uh, some of this, what she was experiencing, you know, and I, I just had to document that because it was it's more like a classic description of what happens in depression. All right, I will look through it and just um, uh, I'll give you the really true so that you can, you can appreciate what persons who are depressed, the kind of emotions they go through because she was so eloquent in, you know, bringing out her experiences. In mentioning them, so I found that quite impressive. All right, so I'll read through verbatim the way she mentioned it for your listening, uh, so, so you can appreciate how a depressed person what they experience. And uh, so I'll just mention about five or I mean about ten things she mentioned. I feel sad. I feel empty. I feel guilty. I feel I don't uh, deserve to be alive, okay? I am exhausted, I feel suffocated, I am tired of living. I don't understand my emotions. I don't have the will to live anymore. I feel lonely and unloved, even though I'm surrounded by people that love me, okay? Uh, I feel like, uh, I, I feel I keep sinking into an ocean uh, of darkness day by day. I don't have the strength, I don't have any strength left in me anymore to live. Um, okay? Then uh, I, I cry every day, I cannot sleep, I can't concentrate in school, and my performance is becoming uh, poor. So all this is exactly how this patient I mean, describe her symptoms, a young lady, and um, you can't have it better than that. Those are the kind of things people who are depressed, that's the kind of emotional state they find themselves. All right? Next slide, please. So, who can be affected by depression? Okay? So, depression affects uh, anyone irrespective of social class. Okay? Male and females with the preference to females. So it can be male, it can be female. The person does has no, I mean, preference for who, I mean, does not respect gender. All right. However, there is a higher preponderance for, for females being uh, uh, come to come uh, coming down with depression. So on the average, more females, I think, about ratio two to one. They are about, you know, for every uh, one. On the press, uh, man, only finds so, so the press, uh, women, you know. So it affects any age group, though it is seen more frequently in early adulthood and the extreme age. Okay, a child is being depressed. Yes, only that most of the time we probably will not pick it up. Or we think that this child is just throwing tantrums or something. You know, so if you find, or if you start noticing your child not wanting to go to school, or cries every time they have to go to school, or they go, or their performance becomes completely in contrast to what you have known them to be, you know, especially if the teacher keeps reporting that this child is not concentrating anymore, he's not playing with other uh, people in the school, you may want to consider maybe that child is depressed. So children may actually suffer depression and it might be missed, right? So, um, so let's continue. Why do persons develop uh, depression among the... Okay, I think I did. Did I go through everything there? Yes, it can be direct consequence of an adverse event mentioned earlier. So, so why do people <clears throat> develop depression? Yeah, yeah. It, can, it, call, it can occur de novo, you know? You have absolutely no reason oh, yeah. to, to uh, attack it, to, all right? So okay, well, then again, the predisposition may be inherited. I alluded to this part earlier. So it can be inherited. The, 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 the predisposition to develop or to have depression may actually be a genetic uh, factor. All right? 
So then it may be side effect of some medication. There are some medication, especially some antihypertensives, like uh, I think Aldome exactly yeah, that they have a side effect uh, of depression depending on the dose or how long the person might be uh, maybe using it for. There are other drugs too that can lead to, to depression, like steroids. Some uh, uh, people on steroid therapy they start developing emotional problems. There are of course some endocrine problems too, you know, like what we call Cushing syndrome might also be one of the reasons especially my depressive uh, uh, disorder, okay? So it may due to be due to other physical illnesses, like the Cushing syndrome I just mentioned now, or if someone is suffering from a chronic illness or a cancer or something, uh, those chronic illnesses secondarily might precipitate depression. In an individual, okay, it may be due to the alcohol and psychoactive substance, you know, or people who, are, who use cocaine or heroin. If they are trying to withdraw from it, they may secondly, or as a consequence of withdrawal, we call it withdrawal symptoms, they now develop uh, depression, which may require to be treated. All right, so you don't just stop them, uh, drugs like. That are still they will, they will pull through. No, they may become physically depressed, and you need to manage that. All right. So then, uh, depression might also be a component of bipolar disorder. I'm sure many of you probably know um, or, or have had you not seen someone with bipolar. And this is like it's also a mood disorder, you know, in which there's a switch between elation, happiness, excessive happiness, you know, high energy at one extreme, normal mood. In the middle, and no of depressed depression in the other extreme. So the depression in bipolar disorder is not so much different than the, from the depression in the I mean the unipolar depression. All right, but the management is absolutely different. Okay, so the person they, they will experience the same mood, mood the low mood, low energy, and all of that. But sometimes in the, the bipolar, they may actually have mixed symptoms. Is related, is energetic, you know, you're having no mood all at the same time. So it's, 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 the clinical picture can be different. But when they are really depressed, yeah, it's very bad also. And uh, it needs to be taken care of. All right. So it may be due to loss events of bereavement, which might be a trigger. Next slide. So I just have one or two slides on anxiety, just to buttress what I said at the beginning. Like I said, I'm a sister of depression. It frequently coexists with depression. It's characterized by feelings of unease, restlessness, fear, worry. Usually, you don't know what you are afraid of, you don't know what you are worried about, yeah, the mind is not just at rest. Okay? It's usually accompanied by bodily symptoms and difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. There can be poor sleep, a lot of nightmares, sweating, trembling, or shaking. The person becomes jumpy. Any small sound, they react to it. You know, they may feel lumps in the throat, nausea. Or abdominal discomfort, you know, feeling bloated, you know, feeling of internal heat, chest pain, discomfort, you know, uh, a lot of funny symptoms that people have might be just be as a result of anxiety. Okay, feeling dizzy, unsteady, uh, lightheadedness, or feeling faint, or feelings of unreality, where you feel as if you are not the one occupying your body. You know, you people, some people will tell you that you feel as if you win this doing them as they are walking and things like that. So a lot of all those things I've just mentioned that you can find in anxiety. You know, a funny one is when people tell you that it's as if there's something stuck in their throat. You know, they are they, 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 they will eat food, swallow it, but they still feel as if it's or that something just yeah. You know, it's an anxiety symptom. All right. So there's so many of them there again, maybe some other time and the if time if uh we I'm called upon we may talk about anxiety a lot because it's actually one of the most common uh, mental you know, that people have all these things that people who go treating uh, uh, cycle and malaria and they will say to do the test is negative, negative, yeah, yes, they are not feeling fine because they feel internal heat, they feel hot within it's because their body, normal temperature, what's happening? You know, so I will tell you the body sensation, all these are anxiety symptoms. So let's just go to the next slide. Uh, types of anxiety, there are quite a number of them have separation anxiety disorder, public anxiety disorder, uh, social anxiety, uh, generalized anxiety, panic disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder, adjustment disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, uh, as the case may be. So, all these are mentioned are all anxiety disorders. And I think there are a few more, but then I think we'll just mention all the same passes. I'm not going to deliberate upon 
uh, the distributor or what the fine song from the other. So how do we mitigate depression? Medical management. So in managing depression from the psychiatric perspective, uh, we uh, we go through what we call the biopsychosocial model or the biopsychosocial approach because there are, there are the biological component to the management, the psychological component to the management, and there is a social component to the management. But importantly, is there is need for a high index of suspicion, you know, by family members, friends or colleagues, and medical practitioners. I think I saw a post, is it, is it today or yesterday, you know, just on someone's feed, and uh, like, if uh, you if you know someone who is always putting, uh, for, uh, always, like, on the initiative media group, is always chatting people up, posting funny things, you know, the life of, of the group or something, all of a sudden the person goes silent. It may be important for the other persons to check on them because that sudden change or absence may just be a change in mood. And when people are, uh, are, are depressed, they tend to isolate themselves, they want to be alone. So it's at that critical time that now it's time for people to, to, to pay back, check on them, and find out how they are doing. Uh, you see it. Right. Oh, yeah, okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, very good. All right. So biological management, psychological management, and social management. So the biological management is uh, the one that involves the use of medication, you know, uh, where we give antidepressants at uh, the appropriate dose, okay, to be able to manage uh, the, the pressure. Usually, the, the, typically, antidepressants don't start working until after two weeks of use. The individual must have been using it for about two weeks before some clinical uh, response will be gotten. Afterwards, yes, the improvement continues. And of course, there are other forms of therapy that we also consider as biological therapy, and that includes physical treatment, okay, uh, like what we call light therapy, and in very severe cases, electroconvulsion, electroconvulsive therapy. Uh, you're not on that, that should be the next slide. That's only one on the screen I can see. All those I mentioned, hand. So this is what I just finished mentioning. So now, next slide. So the psychological approach now to mitigating depression includes counseling, especially in mild cases, uh, interpersonal psychotherapy, uh, behavioral therapy, all these things can happen in mild, in, uh, in fact, you, you can do them in all forms of uh, depression, okay, but alone they can work on mild depression, all right, not requiring uh, medication. Okay, cognitive restructuring, cognitive behavioral therapy, family therapy, and couples therapy, depending on the scenario and who you are managing. All these psychological approaches are usually used in tandem with uh, biological treatment to get better results. So still on the <clears throat> uh, managing next slide, the, the social approach now, this includes uh, support from family and friends, encouragement, having given them a listening ear, you know, provide them continue let them be alone. If they are alone for a lot of, I mean, for less less period of time, they start contemplating having themselves as the case may be. So keep assuring them with suiting words, uh, provide assistance with finances where are necessary and where you are capable, okay? And remind and monitor uh, the use of education as to strive because uh, somebody who is uh, moderately or severely depressed wants to get well. You may prescribe medication to them and they may not be able to take it because they are still depressed. So they need somebody usually when we give them the medicine, we don't give them to hold. We give them to someone. Ask them to give it to somebody else who will now monitor their use and make sure they use it because it takes some time before the effect of the medicine will begin. So all that time, they need a lot of support for the for their habit and plan. Okay. So those who believe, for example, in throughout the world, find out that like, 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 those who believe and uh, who have find comfort in the remembrance of Allah. Surely, in the remembrance of Allah, you have to find uh, comfort. These are soothing words. These are soothing words of Allah that if people meditate over them, can actually make them uh, pull through depression. Okay? <clears throat> now, one of the hadiths of the Holy Prophet, you know, uh, shall I not teach you some words to say when in distress? And... Um, <clears throat> This is narrated by uh, Imam Muslim. Just say, um, uh, um, Allahu, Allah, um, CI, that is Allah, my Lord, I do not associate anything with Him. Some of these uh, spiritual sayings uh, can be very 
helpful in helping individuals come off with um, I mean, come off from depression. Also, there are several other hadiths that I have mentioned there. I'm sure from the Quran, so you can look at the next slide. How they are, uh, I think the translation says um, that la ilaha illa anta subhanahu wa taala inni kufum nazali means there's no God but you. And John said, um, "Are you indeed have been of the wrong doers?" You know this. this all this as uh, they go, they tend to help us uh, put us in the right uh, spiritual frame of mind and can be quite helpful in uh, dealing with depression while you are taking care of the clinical aspect to and taking medication. All right, <clears throat> next slide. So you can see up to the uh, slide 28, 29, 30, they are all uh, either ahadiths or, or um, verses of the Holy Quran that helps, that can help us while uh, the, uh, dealing with depression. All right, so I know I've taken a lot of our time, so I'll just run down to the last slide and uh, conclude. Okay, so like I mentioned, depression and anxiety are important conditions, uh, leading to significant loss of productivity and reduced quality of life. Yes, when someone is depressed, the quality of life is severely impaired, severely reduced. Okay, it can also shorten lifespan. In, in, in the severe, in severe cases, people, when they take Take their life prematurely, that's really a shortening in the lifespan. They need to be taken seriously at all levels. Sorry, sorry. sorry, the network just went off again. I just realized um, I'm not being heard. Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. Okay. All right, this is actually my last slide, or more or less, the penultimate one. So I was on mentioning about uh, that depression, whatever the grade, needs to be taken seriously. It is not a failure of willpower or a failure of character. Uh, it can be effectively managed by professionals. Where if you suspect that somebody has depression or if you yourself are feeling depressed, it may be important to quickly seek the help of a professional so that you can deal with it appropriately and in good time. And of course, assigning prescriptions occupy an important aspect in the psychological management of uh, Muslims. So being a Muslim does not mean you cannot be depressed, but if you are depressed while you are seeking professional help, it also. <clears throat> um, go through or listen to soothing uh, verses from the Holy Quran to help you pull out through fast and strong. Um, I think that's my last slide. Uh, um, okay. Uh, excerpt from the Quran and the Hadith, quoted above, are by no means exhausting. I will encourage us all to, that next slide, to learn and internalize the deeper meanings of the words of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the combination of, um, I'm on the next slide, <clears throat> of good Islamic knowledge, and use of medication yield far better outcome than either alone. Okay? I think I will say that again. A combination of good Islamic knowledge and use of medication yields far better outcome than either alone. So you, you need to combine all of both of these for you to have the best outcome. And the only thing Allah makes this information we have shared to be beneficial to both uh, the speaker and uh, to the listeners. And the, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you for your time. And uh, our pleasure is again coming in a little bit late. So, wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum la khairan. We appreciate you for this uh, short and apt um, lecture that you've given to us. I mean, key to this are uh, some of the high points, uh, highlights that you mentioned. That is to manage depression. Assalamu alaikum. You talked about. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. We can hear you. So the moderator has taken over. I hope you can hear us too, doctor. Doctor, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, Ibrahim, I can sure. hear you. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you, but I'm not sure, sure doctor can hear. can hear. Maybe I should just give him a call. Okay. Okay. I mean, so... Uh, just like the doctor has mentioned, there are different ways to, I mean, uh, managing depression. You talked about the biological way, the psychological way, and as well as the social way, which uh, vis a vis use of medication, uh, counseling, therapy, family support, encouragement, and um, I mean, assuring those who are going through depression that they will be fine. I mean, he advised that we need to take depression seriously. And uh, because it can actually, I mean, shorten lifespan. And in conclusion, he says a combination of the Islamic perspective and as well as medications, we, we actually assist us in um, 
I mean, uh, uh, treating the depression. He also uh, um, gave us um, a dua to make. I mean, allow my niyas, you know, the bika. I mean, I mean, so the the ascari is there for us to. I mean, to uh, if the, the, the audio is a little bit low, let me try and connect again with my phone. Maybe it will be better that way. Okay, I'll just log off from my. Um... Okay, okay, all right. So I mean, so uh, apologies. I was okay. supposed to introduce our rapporteurs for today. Uh, initially, we had we have two bro uh, brother and sister who are taking salient points from the lecture, and um, the sister Aisha Lower and brother Abraham Antani, inshallah. So they've been assisting us in taking points from the lecture. So I mean, so without um, further ado, we'd like to take questions at this point. If you have questions, can you drop them on the chat or request to unmute your mic? If you have questions, kindly unmute your mic. Um, okay. Request to unmute uh, your mic so and I'll also drop your question in the chat box. Why example, we're speaking, sorry. Uh, this is uh, Muhammad. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I can hear. You. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Dr. Etopa Garba for uh, the incisive uh, lecture on this uh, topic. I have um, a number of questions, and I think he has addressed uh, most of them during his uh, presentation. But the two I'm having here is this. Um, uh, it is all uh, always or commonly found that. Uh, celebrities commit suicide. Can doctor give us an insight what, what actually triggered this among uh, celebrities? I mean, what is the connection between their status and their, and their, their, their uh, <coughs> ability to okay. resort to, to suicide? suicide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, yes, I think, I, was, I think your question is quite uh, clear in itself as it is. Um, yes, you see, if the, the lifestyle that celebrities live, generally, if we want to look at it, uh, for a lot of them, they are living what we can easily call like a fake lifestyle. You know, they are under a lot of pressure to want to keep up that front. And again, being a celebrity does not mean that does not make you immune to the uh, pressure, day-to-day -day pressures of life. And again, by the time they start feeling a little bit inadequate, because I mean, allow me to test them. Some of their fortunes might go down and uh, other challenges might come up. By the time they start perceiving themselves inadequate or not be able to measure up to that pedestal where people have put them, the next thing is that, look, I can't face the shame. Let me just go, you know? That typically is like what precipitates or perpetuates uh, depression in a lot of them. And again, a lot of them are also under the influence of drugs to be able to keep up that social front that they, 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 they maintain. And once they, 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 they like maybe try to go off these drugs on their own without going into a, rehabilit a rehabilitation center with, with professional help, of course, they can dip into depression and the consequence might be that they, they commit suicide. So a lot of reasons are, 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 I mean, are available why these people can can be able, can be predisposed to committing suicide when they are depressed. So mm. I think I'll just do it briefly like that. Yeah. So yeah I, 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 my other that. question is, uh, sorry, I'll just ask the two questions together. Okay, uh, we'll you, take that you, one you, question out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, when you made mention of uh, fake life, uh, it, it leads me to uh, other things, like because uh, we, we see today that um, um, the social media is actually um, popularize actually fake life because we don't know the life people are, are living behind the, the screen, but uh, what they portray is what people see. Can you find a link between how social media has actually contributed to the issue of uh, depression? And my other question, which is also the final question, is how much of appreciation has uh, the society, uh, I mean the Nigeria society, uh, how much have you appreciated that uh, depression is actually uh, a disease and uh, it has to be faced uh, in terms of uh, management and mitigation. Okay, fine. I think I will start from the from your last question. Yes, there is a lot of enlightenment going on, really. People are becoming more and more aware about mental health disorders generally. And uh, depression itself is not something that is very alien to people, to individuals any longer. And social media 
I can call it a two-edged sword because at the same time, people, there are a lot of persons before they commit suicide, you see them having, I mean, posting a number of uh, negativistic posts, which to the discerning can actually alert you and let us know that, ah, look, there's a problem uh, brewing here. Let's intervene. Let's help. All right. So and at the same time, social media may be where the people, where individuals get their pressure, their undue pressure from trying to meet up with what they are seeing, thinking that they are inadequate. You know, why are these people do seem to be, these are their peers. They are making it, they are in money, you know, and they look at them, they're languishing in penury. You know, so the pressure from social media has been recognized, you know, uh, even in academic fora that we know that, look, you do not need to over pressure, right? People just put what they feel like, you know, what they are just to train. They want, they want to, 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 to appear to be, to be among. What people are, the majority of what people put on social media is not their real, it's not their reality. So individuals should not allow that to pressure them. But then I can tell you for, with a level of confidence that yes, awareness is quite, is becoming high now. The number of NGOs, for example, who are into mental health primarily. I happen to be belong to one of them, the Asita Foundation, who, which is uh, grounded in Ibadan. It's one of my colleagues that's actually running the NGO, and uh, they are doing a lot of work uh, on, on mental health. I had to visit the NYC camp in Niger State last week to go and give talk on mental health too. So all this um, um, enlightening uh, and educating community education is going on, and people are becoming more and more aware, really. And of course, that reflects in the, even the number of persons I receive in my clinic every day, the number of new patients I get in my clinic each time I run the clinic in the, in the general hospital there. So people are becoming aware of uh, mental illnesses, which depression is one of them. So I think, uh, but then it can be better than what it is right now. I don't know if I've touched on all your questions. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. So, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. I think we'll just take one more question. Um, We'll take one more question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Naam, my name is Ibrahim. Um, thank you, doctor, for the wonderful lecture. Um, considering some of the things you said, especially about uh, mad depression, service, yeah. low, low energy, low, low mood, low energy, yes. Yeah. The yeah, sleep no disorder and loss of uh, interest in yes. Yeah, exactly. I well maybe my statistic might be wrong, but really considering you know what is happening in Nigeria and some of the issues a lot of people are facing, I I think a lot, a lot of people are facing most of these symptoms of uh, mild depression. So are yes. we correct? To, are we correct to say that we, we are all mildly depressed? <laughs> are we are we mildly depressed? Yes, are we correct to say that? And uh, yeah, is it... to to which to what duration can somebody you know be facing all some of these symptoms to be considered you say, depressed. mildly depressed, and that is that can you know lead to permanent or um. The the last the no, last thing. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I, yes, yes. So the severe one. I understand your question perfectly. See, um, yes, it's an interesting thing you brought up about uh, the socioeconomic pressure that everybody is facing today. Um, interestingly, uh, there was a study I did some years back, and uh, which there's a tool we use in measuring depression, and I realized that I think I did that study among people in the IDP. Now it's a skill to measure what we call the general health questionnaire, to measure psychological mobility. Then when I check them and uh, compare them to people in the general society, the figures were not any different. You know, they were comparable in the, how people are, are experiencing psychological stress. But now, not everybody that is, that is being exacted uh, the same level of psychological stress will break down and become depressed. People will weather through, people will cope. You know, we all have this reserve that well, um, or this hope left in us that it will be better. It you know that uh, uh, it, it will not continue like this. So that keeps a lot of us um, afloat and to keep trying and giving our best. So not everybody who faces the same degree of uh, socioeconomic stress will become depressed. Now, 
the durational criteria that we make before we see somebody is depressed is that the symptom must have been ongoing for two weeks, two weeks continuously, you know. Um, so if somebody just comes and be sad for the past five days, six days, no, we don't say he's depressed. We just understand given the context of whatever is going through us at that time. But when the symptoms persist, all those symptoms are there for up to two weeks, they will say, yes, this person is now clinically depressed and we need to take action. Now, uh, there's no time frame that would determine when it becomes from mild to moderate to severe. No. In fact, the time is coming to clinical uh, reckoning, it may, the person may come in severe. So the symptom may have been there for like three weeks, four, four weeks, six weeks, or it may have been there for just two weeks and it is severe. So you, some person might have mild depression and it may continue for several months and it's mild. Or it may continue for several weeks and it is moderate. Or it may just be on for three weeks and it's already severe. So there is no time that determines when, uh, whether it's mild or no. The thing is that whether it's mild, moderate or severe, as long as it's been going on for two weeks, then it's, it's clinical depression. I hope, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if that has answered the question. Yeah, thank you, you did. It does happen like that. Yeah. I mean, what happened? So, um, for the want of time, we're just three minutes to the end of this program. We say, uh, does happen like to you for taking our time to um, join this session, sir. Um, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you in abundance. And um, I, I mean, hope that um, whenever we, are, we need you again, we'll be able to, I mean, call on you and um, you uh, attend to us. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm to call on but Sorry I, for interrupting you. Sorry for inter People are asking for the slide and the recording. Is it possible we get it? Sorry for interrupting. Yes, it's already Inshallah. with Mala Mami. We'll make so... that available. Yes. We'll, we'll to make that available, Inshallah. Yeah, no copyrights. All right. we'll make that available, Inshallah. So please permit me to call on Brother Abaya Abdashi to give uh, a vote of thanks uh, slash appreciation. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. On behalf of Las Mega GC and the entire member of, of Las Mega family, we thank Allah for spending our lives. Alhamdulillah, we praise him for his mercies and favors upon us. I'm glad to express uh, our vote of thanks to our special uh, guest of speaker, Dr. Itopayaya, who has indeed joined justice to the topic. We pray Allah rewards him in money for uh, me. To um, Las Mega as well, uh, to our members from Las Mega and other various organizations, we say a big thank you to everyone of you for your presence and support. We also say a big thank you to our panelists and officials. Uh, I beseech the basis of Allah and His finished mercy to put everyone of us in manifold time. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you for that, Malam. Um, before we go, before we close this for today, we'd like to announce, uh, make this announcement. Please, there's a there's a link on the chat um, there's a chat uh, box. Please, let's try to um, I mean feed there's a feedback form there. Let's try to click on it to give a feedback on the activities of Last Week Mega. This is in order to be able to rate the activities and be able to make amends or improvements where necessary. Right. Secondly, is that um, inshallah on the 13th of August 2022, we're having a professional event and networking session where we'll be having. Um, Mr. Nasir Ayatu, the CI, the Chief Technology and Information Officer at MTN Guinea. And the topic of the session will be how 5G will create value across industries, societies, and opportunities for entrepreneurs. Time 2 to 3 p.m., inshallah, 13th of August. Please, let's try and make it a date. Um, yes, that's about the announcement that we have for us. I mean, to a couple of these, to give us in the, um, to give us a closing dua. Raz, Jami Ismail, if you're there, can you unmute your mic? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now we thank our stars, <coughs> uh, our brother, Dr. Itokwa, for taking us through a very important lecture. And um, we pray Almighty Allah guide you and guide your family. Uh, as well, we thank uh, uh, the Las Omega and each and everyone that participates in today's uh, program. We pray Almighty Allah be with each and every one of us. Amen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastik for kawana tu bilik. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Wa alaikum salam wa salam wa alaikum salam wa alaikum salam wa alaikum salam wa alaikum Just to iterate, don't let us forget that this PDF is a series of professional talks slash webinar. And inshallah, we are going to be having different professionals from different backgrounds. And uh, please kindly stay tuned and look forward to uh, subsequent programs. Thank you. Wa salam. Yeah, please remember, as a member of the public, how we'll be able to get the slide of the recording. Okay. Um, you, you can share your email address in the chat box. Yeah, please, on the chat. It'll be yeah. sent to you. Send your email, put your email address on the chat box. Oh, okay. Thank you. And we'll also right. send to you our subsequent programs. They are free to yeah. join. Then also, I think can we get this on the last mega YouTube channel. Yes, it will yeah, be so there. So we'll try and put it on the last mega YouTube channel. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. You can check last mega on YouTube, please. And subscribe so that you always get notifications for a subsequent event. Some I come to Yes, I sent email to Saba or maybe Yes, I've those. seen it. Okay. Are you I've seen your email address? Are you Mohammed? Yes. Um, yeah, I didn't so, know. Yeah, I'll send I would uh, send you the thank you very much. Thank you so for much for attending. Yeah.